All right, man, we back. Marcy Sports Talk in the building. Appreciate everybody for checking in. Make sure you hit that subscribe button, bell icon button, share the video. And, um, yeah, we're going to talk about what's going on in camp. DeAndre Swift and um, uh, Marvin Hall got injured yesterday. And uh, Jeff Okuda starting to bounce back. So let's talk about it. Hit that subscribe button, bell icon button, share the video once again. Don't forget to check out our Detroit Lions Talk playlist for more videos like this. And, um, yeah, man, it's been quite a few Lions that's been injured. And that's expected to be banged up during training camp, especially when you ain't had no OTAs or no mini camps or nothing like that. It's expected, you know, when you get to banging around, you're going to have those little stingers and minor injuries. So it seems like right now we avoided the major injuries right now. But um, we still waiting on what Mark will happen with Marvin Hall because he left practice and didn't return. But we had talked about those ramifications if he gone. Also, Agnew ended up injuring himself. But, um, but yeah, it's expected before you go through these injuries. You put the pads on. Everybody can stay in the best shape as they want to stay in, right? You could be in tip-top shape, running and all that, but it's really no simulation for, you know, real, real-time, real real-speed sports. You know what I'm saying? It's good to be in shape and you can handle it a little better, but football shape is different from any other condition shape. Basketball shape is different from, you know, you preparing, even if you're playing pickup games. You can't really simulate the high intensity or the high action of a real basketball or football game. So it's going to be even more injuries once the season starts without preseason. You know, because you're doing real changing lanes. You're going against a real opponent. So it's going, to, it's going to be it's going to be tough. It's going to be tough. But, um, yeah, Okuda had a really good day yesterday. Um, he had a pick off Matthew Stafford, but Stafford kind of hold his life and said that, it was offsides, so the pick he got was because somebody was offsides, all right? It was a free play, but he broke up some passes on Marvin Jones, so he's starting to get it, and the more and more they 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 play in training camp, you know, the better he going to get, so he was running with the ones yesterday because Dashman Trufant was out, probably just some minor maintenance, minor dings and dangs uh, that he got, but, you know, that's what you want to hear. He ain't just getting toasted. He learning. He clean up his technique. He's saying that uh, Marvin helping him. He's saying that Chase Daniels helping him. You know what I'm saying? He's saying all these these people giving him insight. So that's good when you can get a quarterback's insight on things and then receiver insight insight on things. This is what he this is what he need. You know what I'm saying? It's good to see his confidence ain't wavered. You know that quick. If his confidence got down, he wouldn't have went out there and even got a pass breakup yesterday. He would be burnt toast. So that's kind of what you want to hear. But it doesn't mean that he, he going to be smooth sailing from here. It's going to be days where it's up and down like road out road. That's just what it is. He might get in the first game and start and get baptized. So did Patrick Peterson versus, you know, Steve Smith Sr. and Cam Newton. It happens. And the, the, the Pistons, the Lions, excuse me, was trying to be in a position where they win now. But to be honest, you know, they just they just kind of made the same mistake the Pistons did last year. You know, the Pistons, excuse me, the Pistons, you know, they drafted Diambo for the future. And they end up playing him at some point because of the injuries, but for a team that was trying to trying to win now, you can't tiptoe the line. Even for the Lions, you can't tiptoe the line. Either you win if you waiting for the future, or you trying to go all in and win now. And with your what twelve year quarterback Matthew Stafford, a cornerback is not gonna help him win now. Maybe in week eight, nine, ten, they he started to get it, but you know they did what they thought was best. They took the best player on the board, and if they don't ball out this year and they don't win this year. Um, or in the near future, somebody else going to benefit from Jeff Okuda's performances. So, I mean, it's good to see him in there and, and, and doing some good things. I think Marvin Jones got banged up too. So I think he got injured as well. I, don't quote me on that one. But it's good to see him out there defending and, and doing what he do, um, Jeff Okuda. But it's just a, it's a learning process. But he been he going to benefit this year from having three awesome receivers. But, um, yeah, DeAndre Swift got banged up. Let's switch lanes there. He got banged up today and you know, or yesterday. I think it was the first blocking drill they did or whatever. And uh, he left the field and he uh he did return, but he didn't do full activities. Okay? He didn't do full activities. So right now he already kind of banged up and 
Kerryon Johnson also got injured uh, not too long, a, cu a couple days ago as well. Uh, Bo Scarborough got banged up as well. He didn't practice yesterday. So the Williams kid they got from uh, the Indianapolis Colts, he's been doing really, really well. Uh, so, you know, at the end of the day, we kind of started to see that the backfield kind of banged up early. Um, but I, I really wouldn't worry about it right now. That's just going to give Huntley and uh, Ty and the Williams guy from uh, Indianapolis some more time to uh, to get these reps, right? And we really can really see. We know Scarborough, what he brings to the table. We know what Carrion brings to the table. And we pretty much got an idea what DeAndre Swift brings to the table. But really, it's just a battle for that fourth running back position. Is Swift going to get it? Is I mean, I Swift. Is Ty going to get it? Is Huntley going to get it? Is Williams going to get it? They brought West Hill back. Is he going to get it? So it just really boiled down to, you know, what's going to be happening from, you know, between them battling. But, you know, at the end of the day, as long as we don't have a big catastrophic injury, I'm cool with it. But DeAndre Swift is probably going to be utilized like Christian McCaffrey and Alvin Kamara. They're doing some things out the backfield. And that's kind of keeps me, that keeps me, uh, that keeps hope alive that Daryl Breville is going to evolve his offense. His offense is old school West Coast. And, you know, right now he can get, he can get more out of Swift and more out of Johnson if he used them in the in the passing game. You know what I'm saying? The swing routes, the Texas routes, the circle routes, the option routes, the wheel routes. He can get a lot out of those dudes. So that kind of gave me hope that he kind of uh, drew up an offense that's going to feature the, the running backs out the backfield receiving. And it's going to feature TJ Hawkinson even more. So if we get something out the backs receiving and, and they can run the ball enough and we get something out of Hawkinson, we should we should be in a really good position to succeed next year. So I look forward to that, man. But also, uh, Marvin Hall went down yesterday, so that's a, that's tough because he are really our only uh, deep ball receiver that that's really you know fast. Other than like Kenny Galladay, you know what I'm saying? He the only dude that can break away and get big plays. Now he only had seven catches last year, but he are really only guy that can get down the field, and defenses have to respect and stretch the field. So. Unless you count on Agnew, and he got banged up a little bit last last uh, yesterday, I heard. So you know Marvin Hall, that's a huge, huge, huge monumental loss um, if he out because he didn't return. So we don't know how bad his injury is. Knowing the Lions three weeks, three weeks down the line, we find out that he out for the season, or you know whatever that situation is. So that's gonna be that's gonna be a really really tough loss right there with him because we need that speed though. We need that speed. You know, we need it. We need it. We need it now. Because of Agnew, I heard he's doing good things as a receiver, but you really can't trust that. You know what I'm saying? But we need that speed now. We need we need him to get down the field and, you know, stretch the defense. But, um, you know, outside of that, you know, ain't, ain't really much that been reported. You know, I'm pretty I'm pretty sure Matthew Stafford, they, there's reports that he looking really good and really strong. Um. And, and that's how he posed a little. You know what I'm saying? That's what we that's what we need Stafford to do. We need Stafford to go out there, be strong, be healthy, throw the ball. And he just gotta have, get some help from them backs. But we, we got a few injured backs already in camp. So, you know, it don't surprise me carry on injured. Carry on on borrowed time. You know what I'm saying? Carry on Johnson on, on borrowed time. If he don't if he don't get his act together, he's gonna be playing somewhere in Wisconsin. Or somewhere in Ohio, somewhere of that nature. You know what I'm saying? But him and Swift both can't be injury prone. We can't have that. Him and DeAndre Swift can't be injury, both injury prone. But they might open the door for somebody else. But we, you see how they utilize, utilize them, man. But right now, Stafford is looking good. His arm looking potent. Um, and that's pretty much, you know, that's pretty much what we need. So... Uh, other than that, man, I think Agnew got injured yesterday, but I don't think it was serious. If if Hall go down and we can't get nothing out of Hall, Agnew gonna be huge. You know, if Agnew can step up and be an explosive receiver, then then that's nice. But if not, we lose Agnew or Agnew don't give us nothing. We don't have Hall. Our our offense just gonna be less dynamic in the games. Or if DeAndre Swift miss any games, we really gonna have no speed. And that's what happens when you only have a handful of guys that can break away speed-wise. We don't have a lot of the game breakers like, you know, Kansas City. You know, we don't have a lot of game breakers, man. And 
you know, the little ones that we do got, all of them is, is injured right now. And that's going to be hard for Matthew Stafford, man. It's really down to Galladay. And, and Jones is getting a little slower. Amendola ain't never been a burner. And we don't have no burners at tight end neither. So, I mean, it is what it is. Let me know what you guys think. Don't forget me on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. You can reach out if you got business questions, private responsibility, video requests. Keep sharing the videos. Want to make a donation to the channel. Cash App, PayPal in the description. Appreciate the love, support. Y'all know what the business is. One time for the one time we're going.